Of he course. He wanted me to <laughs> put on overalls and let his wife call me Jim and then bang her in front of him while he was tied to a chair. Slugging through the school semester in September. But should higher education aspire to higher aspirations? Welcome to the Minority Report, where myself, my fellow minorities, and one token straight white male discuss culture, politics, and conclude each show by, name, by naming a min not a minority, I'm already going to deport a minority, by naming an American to deport. So, to start things off in alphabetical order. So, Black Brandon, introduce yourself. Of course, uh, I'm Brandon Mason of the Texas Masons. Uh, as you know, I'm a black male. Congratulations. Congratulations. You're so brave. Three things so brave. And uh, straight before the others weed us out. Um, educational background, I've got a bachelor's degree from Texas State University, naturally. And currently finishing up my law degree at University of North Texas. Do not recommend. <laughs> All right. Now, pinging this in alphabetical order to White Brendan. Here's why we call them white and black for you listeners out there. Well, in case it wasn't already clear, I am white. And uh, oh, come on. Don't, don't worry. I've got a lot more privilege points to rack up here. I am white. I am straight. And in case it wasn't clear, I am a man. I like that last part. I bet you do. So um, I am regret. I am currently a student at Texas State University, and that is you're about Bobcats Title Nine. Go. You know, <laughs> that could be our motto with how often it comes up. Um, I am not a full-time student. I work full-time as well to pay for school because I didn't get grants from the government as aforementioned straight white man. All right. Now, heading over to our chocolate libertarian, Sierra. Hi. Ciara. I'm Sierra Anderson. I am a an happy, angry black woman. And I graduated with my bachelor's in science from Texas a and University. Um, yeah, not doing the best, but got to make do with what you got. And uh, being black isn't so bad all the time. Yeah, I wonder what is 77% of three-fifths? Because you got accounted for the pay gap. But anyway, before she calls me a butthole. So over to our Latina, but don't let that fool you, RJ. Exactly. Uh, I'm RJ. I'm a sexually progressive, struggling artist, uh, Latina. I got my BFA in. Fuck off, Chris. I don't. Uh, I do speak Spanish. I don't have to though, just because I'm Hispanic. Um, and I got my BFA in filmmaking. Um, I got my art degree in 2015. Sometimes I have to think back because I kind of forgot <laughs> about my college education. Already. All right. And I'm Chris, your host. I'm a gay Asian immigrant, and unlike these folks, I'm a serial college dropout. Worst Asian out there. So, to get things started off, to the person with the most oppression points to start off a round table discussion, Ciara. So, Ciara, in your opinion, what do you believe should be the purpose of college and its universities living up to this mission? So, whenever I was in high school, the one thing I always wanted was to get a job that I loved, and um, I was told college was supposed to help me with that. So. I feel like universities in general should help with job placement in the long run, and um, they fail at that miserably half the time uh, when they have job fairs every quarter. Um, I had the experience at my university that um, it was mostly engineering positions and not a lot of science positions out there. Unfortunately, um, it doesn't work out for entry level uh, scientists, you have to have two years of experience. So <laughs> four years of college and internships not being paid uh, did not count towards that. So <laughs> now I'm, I'm, I have email blasts every now and again from the university director who, um, he gets jobs in his email, I guess. So he sends them out to all the former students. Um, they either pay way less than what I make now as a server, mm. or I need five plus years experience. So I've been out of college for about three years now, and 
the job placement thing just didn't work out. So uh, sometimes you just got to do what you got to do by yourself. And unfortunately, I had to pay a lot of money to basically do that for myself. So. Mm -hmm. Crazy. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm just saying, yeah, exactly. That's crazy shit. I mean, like, I just feel like, okay, so, mm -hmm. I mean, when we were growing up, Chris and I, obviously, I don't know about you guys, but um, we grew up in a small town, small military town. Yeah. So, hey, I mean, our parents told us, our parents and all of our, all the adults in our lives told us, you know, you only have two options after high school to, like, make something of yourself, go to college or the military, right? A lot of us went to college. We're like, you know, we went to college because our parents told us, you need to go to college, get that good job, you know, make us proud and all that. Um, they, they want the best for us. They want us to have that good job. Right. Um, obviously, in college, it's like you go to college and they do like, okay, well, in your senior year, um, in your final semester of your senior year, we have um, the career course or whatever where we'll help you um, create your resume and we'll tell you about like, the available internships and all that, yada, yada. And while I was in college, and like now that I'm a working adult after college, mm -hmm. I'm like, you know what? If I'm the one plunking my, my money down and I'm getting into tens of thousands of dollars in debt, I really feel like when I'm in college, if I'm supposed to be here to get a good job, you guys need to like, like I, this should be more like on the job yeah. training. So that way, and you better like that, whatever. I feel like just one class at the end of your senior year that tells you about an available internship. No, like that's not enough. Like I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna be in tens of thousands of dollars in the early prime years of my life getting out of here. Um, if I'm supposed to be here to get the job, then yeah, tr provide me with a job training. Um, in about a year or so, um, actually get me out there to network with professionals in in the in the city or the surrounding area, um, and get me the work experience I'm supposed to receive. You know. Um, I got my, I, I studied filmmaking, I studied art, you know? So I'm just like, okay, uh, yeah, there are gonna be certain jobs out there where it's like, okay, maybe most jobs out there are for engineers and computer tech jobs. But still, like, get me into a place where, like you promised when we first started this whole thing, like, we're gonna get you a good job that's gonna help you to pay back your student loan debt after you leave. If you're gonna promise me that and I'm gonna like make a financial commitment to it, um, I better A, be getting my, my money's worth out of this. <laughs> I wanna Give, point something out. Yeah. You, you were saying like um, the networking side of it to get a job. Yeah, networking and, uh, go ahead. So I was in, um, it was a community called the Black Student Alliance. Okay. There was maybe seven of us. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so Sounds about right. Huge university, <laughs> seven of us. So yeah. we basically just networked with each other. Right. And like, that didn't get us very far. But right. you have other, you know, branches and communities in the school that are full of <laughs> no, I, I mean, I guess I'll pick up here because speaking as the, uh, as the one who's supposed to have these opportunities. You can say the W word. <laughs> White people. <laughs> but no, honestly, that, that's kind of what it seems like. So from my perspective as well, I, I would like to point out Texas State is a lot more diverse than most universities. Uh -huh. But even with that, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of white people there. And I can tell that there's definitely a trend on the types of people who... Um, who seem to like it seem like they get internships or I hear about doing well and that sort of thing. And I've, you know, offered you know, I've heard about stuff like getting internships and all that, but that's really hard to do. First of all, if you're not a junior and a senior, most of the time you're not even gonna get considered. They will right. not look at your resume before you're junior or senior. Which means that for freshman and sophomore you're kinda of just screwed. Yeah, I mean um, come on, like put me to work, but they won't. <laughs> exactly. So I, and then the alternative there is that you can get like some, you know, okay job that you could work for a summer that's gonna put some work experience on your resume, but that's not gonna end up helping you that much in the long run. Mm -hmm. no. uh, and most of the time, those places won't even hire you anyways, because they know you're only around temporarily. Uh, yeah. it's like, and, and staffing firms yeah. are practically useless without a degree. Oh, so you, oh, could yeah. you could try to do a temp position, but all of them are just gonna say, hey, doesn't matter, I don't care. Um, right? They'll say, oh, well, you could we give you a nice, how about ten dollars an hour, right? I can make more than that at Dairy Queen. Okay, Which is, yeah, I, I have bills to pay. enough, you can exactly. Yeah. Isn't it like twelve now? Yeah. Bullshit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jeez, uh, leave. Uh, Black man, uh, any thoughts on the matter? What is the purpose of college, in your opinion? Are you in agreement with our friends here that it is to prepare you for job placements in the working world? Hell no. 
<laughs> Interesting. I'm pretty libertarian. It's not the right word for it. Yeah, uh, libertarian. <laughs> 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 that me. I think every <laughs> in the legal world, when we talk about uh, states and why it's important that they be able to do their own thing, um, we talk about how it's so important that we should be able to. Each individual state should regulate as much of the citizens' lives as they can because think of it as an experiment. You get useful data out of that. You get to see it. Uh, they develop their own cultures and all of that. Their policies we see absolutely fail on the West Coast that we don't bring back to Texas, for example. I think universities should be more or less the same thing. They should have their philosophies. They should build curriculums around that. Students should willingly go if they are intrigued by that philosophy. and. If it suits them, it suits them. But right. uh, like, if I want to start a, I don't know, Brandon Mason University, that's basically a cult built around the career of Danny DeVito. I should be able to do that, <laughs> and you know, give you a degree in divitology. Otherwise known as Donald Trump University. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, if that intrigues people. Cool. Um, but if people know that's what they're getting into and that's what my whole thing's about and mm -hmm. that's my curriculum and they want to do that and they see some future with the divatology degree, sure. Um, if I want to be a business exec and go to Texas State, eh, <laughs> me personally, I think they can do some things better, but I can at least see all of that going in yeah. and I got thousands to pick from across the whole US and tens of thousands if I decide to do it internationally. So I think they're more or less on the right track now because there's at least a diversity in what and how all these places teach and even just the environment. So uh, I'm pretty happy with the way things are now. Uh, if I may, real quick. Um, so Black Brandon, I, I just feel like it might be worth noting that what we have currently with the university system almost seems like they're misrepresenting what's going on. Because we all get told our whole lives, and maybe the university themselves aren't, aren't saying this, right? Maybe this is just a cultural issue. But we get told stuff like what they were referring to as like, yeah. this is how you get a job. But the universities still keep curriculums in place that aren't focused on getting a job, right? Like right. as a business major, I'm still forced to take a theater class, you know, fine arts, stuff It's like, like that. what is that, you so, know? So I think that universities are still operating under the model not to get someone a job. That it, that's what a trade school does. Um, mm -hmm. But they're operating under the model of, hey, we're going to give you a higher education. Right, but especially state schools are doing neither. Uh, you know, speaking as someone who's going to a state school right now, I think most of us have encountered that the state schools we've gone to, they they're accomplishing half of both, and they're not helping you really get a job. So they're not really giving you job training, and they're not even giving you a decent higher education. Right? If I want to learn about the classics, I would like to actually learn about the classics. I got, I, I learned more and have learned more throughout independent study and in high school even mm -hmm. than I did about fine arts and literature than I, in college because they're all blow off courses and the university knows it. Mm -hmm. um, I think that universities need to rebrand themselves to some degree, right? Either they need to accept being a trade school or they need to right. accept being higher education. Well, mm -hmm. they're benefiting a good bit from just playing the middle ground. And like, for example, for me, that doesn't work. Uh, I chose Texas State for the purely pragmatic reason. It was the fastest way to get a bachelor's degree to get into my trade school, which is yeah. law. Um, so for that, they suited me just fine. Yeah. But uh, every problem you listed is something that, like if I were an 18-year-old coming out of high school, I can look up every major that Texas State offers. I can look at their curriculum, and mm -hmm. I can say, hell no, I'm not taking three maths class to uh, just, I don't know do business or just act right. or just get my major in Spanish theology or whatever. <laughs> well, but it's not even just about like the fact that they, you can choose between the different options, right? Because I, I fully agree with that choice, right? And I'm not suggesting that we need to have any mandatory changes coming from the government by any means, right? But if we're talking oh, no. about some ideal form of what a university should be, I think the ideal form of university is to accept being one or the other or having clearly defined separate programs mm. as opposed to straddling that gap and frankly half-assing two things instead of whole-assing oh, one yeah. Speaking of half-assing two things, so according to a Pew Research study in 2017, 50% of America believed that college was supposed to prepare you for specific skills while far less than that said it's for your personal self-growth. So a lot more people are pragmatic-minded nowadays. <laughs> 
But the higher that you go up there, the more, for example, postgraduate degrees, the majority of them say, oh yes, it's for your personal growth, the purpose of college. And of course, if you complain to your universities now, they say, well, we actually never promised you a job, then that's really up to you. That's their weasel way out of yeah. it. Their is like the culture you said. The culture is pushing this, and they're saying, okay, I'm gonna keep my mouth shut and keep this lie going, even mm -hmm. without my explicit contribution. And this thing, I understand they never explicitly promise you a job. Of course, they can't legally, like, hey, legally in writing, we're going to say we're promising you a job after you graduate from our school. Um, but there is the whole, like, not just from the universities, but it's mostly, you know, probably from the universities saying, like, um, telling us and telling our parents, because, I mean, the adults in our lives, I have to understand why they kind of pressured us into it. Um, a lot of them, this was, like, the information that they were learning as well was, um, we're going to give you a way better chance of getting that quote unquote good job um, after graduating. So like you said, it's like, okay, yeah, they didn't explicitly say in, some, in writing, like, we promise you a job, but they're but like, they're you should come to, you should, they're benefiting because they're like, you should come to our college because we're the ones who are going to get you a, a way better chance at that job that you want. And speaking of benefits, I might have a slight tangent. There was a scandal not too long ago that involved Citibank, University of New York, no, New York University party in University of Pennsylvania, to where it found out that the Fed, their chief financial aid officers held stocks in Citibank, and they also listed Citibank as their preferred yep. lender. So much for colleges looking out for us. Right, exactly. Uh, I'm seeing like New York standard, really. <laughs> completely, it's completely I'm a little biased because I'm from New York. <laughs> oh my God, you're both from New York this table? I know, oh. I'm from New York as well, but that's completely disgusting. I mean, come on. Yeah, I, that's slimy. I would never, that's... Yeah, Co major conflict of interest, either choose one or choose the other, like you said, don't be both. Yeah, well, and, and frankly, I think at that point, after that information came out, I certainly hope someone started a class action lawsuit. Right, I, I don't, I'm not the law student here, but I feel like you could get <laughs> That's what I'm saying, well, uh, definitely. The detail that's missing inside that is, you know, surely it puts you towards a certain bank. Did that decision harm you is the question. They benefited from it, but did you get hurt? Right. Did they leave you worse off than if you would have gone out on your own to try to find your own preferred lender? Yeah, that I couldn't find in my readings, whether or not there was a preferred lender that offered uh, a better deal for the students involved. But a more educated decision such as, hey, by the way, Owen sucks at Citibank to disclose this information. That's pretty prudent for a customer who is, because essentially students are customers. Let's, mm -hmm. let's be real here. Yeah. The colleges be more treated as an enterprise yep. than as the mission of educating the masses to be good citizens of the United States. I mean, that, uh, part of that I'd say is true, but also I, none hyperbolically speaking, have never even met somebody else who read all of the stuff that goes into getting a student loan, for example. Like yeah. they, they probably know the ins and outs of you repay it starting six months after you graduate, mm -hmm. and they know what the interest rate says. And after that, you know, ask people about, you know, their debt. Uh, you know, how's the um, interest work? How long is it going to take you to pay it off? What will the final amount be? What's the actual, you know, month, year-long term how long of can your defer, loan? How, because they don't what know. What does insolvent mean? They don't go through these things with the students. They, they force on this cultural pressure of, hey, everyone's doing it, so why are you questioning the grain? Exactly. Yeah. Why are you questioning the grain? Yeah. I had someone tell me that. So uh, my goal was obviously law school. It still is. Um, and I was holding off because I wanted to save money and, you know, be able to pay my way similar to the same way I had paid through my undergrad. And the first thing that everybody that was about to go start school said to me was, just take out a loan. You can pay it back you later. You can pay it back later. <laughs> it, it doesn't matter. <laughs> you're you're going to get a good job after you graduate anyway. Yeah. Like, okay. you'll be able to no, pay it back. There's no guarantee of that. Naturally. Exactly. <laughs> well, to be fair, I think that's just... American culture. Yeah. I mean, but that's what I'm saying. Look at the housing that's prices where everyone's been... like, yeah, this more will figure itself credit out. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but that's what's been drilled well, in our heads. From yes. what I've heard, credit card debt's actually been going down a lot um, because millennials and I guess mm -hmm. Gen Z starting as ne uh, well as now, as well now. That's how words work. Uh, starting as well I'll now are, are, guy. are a lot better at not just taking out massive credit card debts. Yeah, and millennials yeah. are notably better at just doing prepaid credit, credit cards as opposed to just racking up credit card bills that... Totally. Cash yeah. is king. Yeah, but we yeah. also had like the most, I guess, head start on information. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm? Probably, Because uh, yeah. we saw how our uh, former generations used money, and yeah. it obviously didn't work. 
So yeah. we have to change that. So not to piss off my uh, mature viewers, let's go on to our second uh, <laughs> topic. So not, not second topic, second question. So the person with the second most impression point <laughs> is Miss RJ Castillo over here. So RJ, uh, do you believe, uh, what do you believe that society should adopt in regards to their attitudes towards higher education? Um, well, we kind of got started getting a little into that um, with uh, this round of uh, the roundtable discussion. Um, but basically, so I mean, here's the thing. When I was, I, I want to say it again, like when we were growing up, we had that whole thing drilled into us. Um, like I said, I understand now as an adult, I kind of understand why our parents drilled that into us. Um, I mean, in their time, they were kind of seeing like, oh my gosh, more and more employers are starting to to require a degree for the good jobs. And if you were like me, like the child of immigrants and a person of color, it was like, you especially had to go to college. Oh, <laughs> yeah. that's, that's the, it was like, that's the American dream. That's the American experience. That's what they came to this country for, was like, I can put my kid to college and she or he will become this respected, learned person after college, get a good job and have a future, have a secure future. Um, so that was us, you know, growing up. Uh, what I believed back then and what I still believe now, of course, especially after all I've been through, I'm like, I'm very proud of my degree and I'm glad I am fond of my college memories. I am, but I believe that, you know, old little thing that people say college is not for everyone. I don't feel like we should drill it into the heads of like all of our young teenagers, teenagers who have never made a decision on their own in their whole life, <laughs> who are legally adults, but they're mentally children. I feel like, man, like looking back, I'm like, I really wish I had taken that um, gap year after high school. I was, very, I was very much discouraged from taking that gap year. Oh, yes. Um, but um, I was like, I really wish I had taken that gap year because let me tell you, when I, was, um, when I was 20 and a junior in college, I was still living with my mother in Killeen, Texas. And I was going to school like I, like I was supposed to, being a good college student. I never experienced a damn thing. I never worked, I never had a job. I was very much socially sheltered. Uh, so I didn't really know how to deal with people as you need to learn to do as an adult. Um, it wasn't until I was finally like, no, I'm gonna apply for a job, a part-time job. I got a part-time job at my school, um, moved in with a roommate near campus. And it wasn't until I did that, I get, started getting some like, working adult, real world experience. I was like, that was like the, biggest education I've ever gotten in my life. That changed my whole life. I knew what it was to become financially independent. I knew what it was to like manage my money for fucking once. Um, I, I, it gave me a boost of confidence. Uh, a lot of the qualities I have now that um, it really impressed my employers and impressed other people that have gotten me the things I want in life really developed in that one year where I was starting to work and become an adult. Um, so I just feel like looking back, I'm like, if I'd taken that gap year, I probably still would have um, gone to college eventually. Um, I just feel like, man, college, I feel like that's something an adult needs to make. <laughs> like once you've been, not, I'm sorry, but like not, not a kid who's been like living with their parents their whole life and like. Asking for me to go to the bathroom. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, now sign these uh, papers for the rest of your life. Dude, exactly. I'm like, when I was an 18 year old, I, like Brandon said over here, I'm like, I had no idea. Like, yes, they explained to me the loans and interest and all that. But that was so hard to wrap my head around. Like, what are you talking about? I've never even earned my own money before. Being an adult, now I'm like definitely more on top of like, I'm not gonna get into that credit card debt because now I know a little bit more about my finances, what I can afford to pay back, when it's gotta be paid back. Um, after all of my adult experiences, I know a little bit more that, hey, people don't deliver on their promises to me. So, <laughs> you know, um, I'm not gonna be so easily fooled now. Um, I just feel like, A, we gotta adopt the fact that, look, look, stop, stop pressuring kids into like, you have to go to college, it's college is for everyone. And we're gonna, you're gonna get a good job anyways afterwards to pay back that <laughs> loan. Um, not for everyone, and that's not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like what the student should be more in charge of what they're getting out of, because again, it's their money, damn it. <laughs> I'm gonna be a financial slave after I'm graduating. Put me more in charge of what I'm gonna learn here. If I'm trying to be a business person, um, or I'm sorry, that's I think that's a, what you're trying to say. Yeah. Business major, um, I feel like I'm gonna be better off taking a course regarding that as opposed to theater. 
let me go more into that. Why, why am I in a class learning theater when I should be out there networking? Get me networking, get me mm -hmm. into a job, you know? Don't uh, let the student have more um, autonomy. autonomy over what they are trying to get out of this college degrees, but as opposed to um, forcing into a curriculum, half of which has nothing to do with, or is that going to help them really in um, getting that job afterwards, right. or, or getting what they want out of that degree? Right. Um, uh, oh, yeah. I was just going to interrupt. Because, go for uh, it. You know, that's what, that's what my people do. I kind of um, rambled, so go uh, ahead. So At least you waited a little while. <laughs> yeah. You should have opened with, well, actually. Just well, say. actually. <laughs> well, actually. Yeah, I kind of rambled, so. <laughs> Go for it. I, I think that one of the uh, one of the interesting oh, what's the right word for it? It, it doesn't matter. Um, you made the language, <laughs> right? Well, <laughs> you assume that anyone <laughs> at this table actually understands English. Um, we can say we understand it, right? But English is a mess. Hey, I have to be a citizen of this country, so yeah, I have to understand. Definitely. It. <laughs> 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 actually, you probably have the hardest English test out of anyone here, right? Uh, well, yeah, it turns out on me. This is the this is the white devil over here. Um, so I think that this is really fun thing that we see with the universities where they say, okay, yes, we trust you to make this adult decision and you're going to go in debt. We trust you to do all these things, but also we don't trust you enough to, you know, control your, like you can choose yeah. what order mm -hmm. you take classes in, right? But not without an advisor. Oh no, no, we can't let you do that. And not without approval from all of the professors. Right. No, oh, you have to live on campus. And you have to live on campus, uh. right? So, so we trust you to take out. Ten, fifteen, yeah. twenty thousand dollars in debt, depending on what university you go to. You know, sometimes thirty or forty. Um, I really hope. sixty thousand. <laughs> I really hope not. I'm so sorry. My first university was about seventy thousand yeah. for one year. That's insane. I, I think oh, Texas State is about twenty k a year. Damn, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Something like that. I was thinking sixty thousand for the whole four years, but I didn't. Uh, I not one. Paying. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's some bullshit. But I would have gone to St. Mary's, and that's what the fullest <laughs> scholarship that they offer. For law school, just I mean, not okay. even their undergrad, I'd be out 50k every year of law school. That's insane. Yeah, yeah but that's, that's after also yeah, that's also really high education. <laughs> like, yeah, you're like undergrad. I can understand that there's more opportunities for like grants and scholarships because that's what. Well, we kind of got that drilled in our heads. That's what we need to have to at least be successful in society. It's up to you at that point if you want to continue with that. So it's, it's I can understand why the burden, uh, financial burden would be put more on you to become a doctor or. So Ciara, why does, well actually. Uh, so Ciara, why, <laughs> well actually. Why, does, why does the burden fall on you starting for post undergraduate, right? Why does the undergraduate different than any other degree? Um, I don't know. Uh, kind of maybe because and said, That's it's, it. like I said, it's a societal thing. It's not necessarily well, how yeah. I feel about it because I want to be a lawyer, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I can understand that, you know, Texas isn't going to make as much money off of putting us through law school as they would putting us through our undergrad, mm -hmm. to be fair. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they make good money off of law school, let me tell you that one. Oh my gosh. Yeah. There's a lot less overhead to well, tell people to read. Well, that's because they don't have to pay test. for it. <laughs> they don't have to pay for law school. We have to pay for it. That's why they're making all the money off of it. Oh, yeah. But um, up until, no, still currently, but before our generation, it was really rare to have a post-high uh, school degree. Yeah. Like... Um, before the 80s, it was below 20% of yeah. the country. Well, I, it really wasn't a, it was not a daily thing. And mm -hmm. we're not that much brighter than our <laughs> exactly. parents were this age. So I don't think we're doing anything revolutionary here. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Chris, you, can, you can let us, you know, put us back on track if we need to here. But mm -hmm. I'm curious then on like, what do y'all think the turning point was, right? On like. I know that in 98, the school year of 98 through 99 is when FAFSA came out. Is that oh. the turning point of, you know, when people started going to school more, when we started to get high, more people in higher education? Or I think the turning point, uh, I'd say it happened on two, like, prongs. Uh, first of all, if uh, you were poor, there wasn't a federally guaranteed loan for you out there. Mm -hmm. You had to earn your ass. Mm -hmm. 
either someone who was willing to bankroll you for free as part of a scholarship, or you could get a traditional loan, but you need to those traditionally show you can pay those back. And those yeah, were also credit. crazy high interest rates yeah. in comparison to FAFSA. Yeah. So even then, you already had to show that you were responsible enough to pay back a loan. And if you're that responsible, you're probably responsible enough to realize what's a good loan and what's not, and kind of jockey that way. So that requires a person of a certain temperament to do, which the majority yeah. of people aren't. Yeah, so, and I think that education plays a big, like, you know, not just education uh, in college or anything like that, but primary education plays a big part in your ability to comprehend those things, right? Mm -hmm. We don't get taught how to think things through in Hell school. No. Um, but we get taught how to take a test. All right. That's yes. pretty much. Especially now. Right. Do Speaking with your of primary education and forcing students into things that they don't know what they're doing. Right. So there's a bill that's going through in New Mexico. Uh, it's been proposed. It's bipartisan, so you can blame both parties for this. <laughs> nice. My yes. favorite yes. thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's all y'all's fault, though. Uh, elephants and donkeys. So in their infinite wisdom, in the, this bipartisan bill, they propose that students should be forced to have a postgraduate plan from high school in order to walk the stage. So you either have to say, hey, I'm going to apply for college. You have to show that you're applying for colleges. I'm going to join the military. I'm going to have an internship. I mean, who gets internships nowadays, as you said before? I know, right? I mean, you, uh, you can get unpaid internships. Uh, yeah, it's <laughs> easy to get an unpaid internship. <laughs> as a get white that person, experience. I managed to get one, of but that's just did. because I'm a white person. Sure. And, and, and they, <laughs> that's just what they did. They had a couple token black people in the office, of course, right? To make How are they dressed? I want to know. Uh, so it was, a, uh, it was off 360. It was a casual, uh, like business casual, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of, uh, they did, did credit they card. Did they their shirts? Yes, uh -huh. sometimes. So like it, it depended on who it was, right? Because there was one guy who would come in and he didn't finish his degree. He just worked there because he got an internship with them and then dropped out of school to continue doing his job. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, well, you got to get it first, I guess. Basically, basically, basically he that started the point, there so and he's works. just yeah, he's stuck with this company for the rest of his life. And the company's like, cool, we'll pay you money. He's like, cool, that's all I need. Uh, he, he, was, he was one of those like, long hair types, right? And, you know, mm -hmm. and a nice, well-trimmed beard, but come up wearing short, or shorts, t-shirts, everything like that. <laughs> What happened to dress for the job you want? Like that, uh, that was the job right? you wanted. That's, what that's that. kind of <laughs> that's weird. <laughs> well, it, it was also Austin, right? So that's just normal. True, right? gotcha. Yeah. Okay, it, yeah, is a, it is a bit and, uh, normal. Working in Austin, I can tell you, yeah. yeah. I feel. I, I think that turns on the way out. <laughs> I feel so out of in our generation, like. As soon as I graduate, I'm opening a firm. I'm not ever wearing shoes in that hoe. <laughs> Good. Uh, yeah. right. I almost uh, gave my boss an ultimatum at my last firm, where it's like I. This is how I practice. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> it's like, you know. barefoot is life. I, I yeah, I'm about that. But, you know, <laughs> it's like, sure, you can debate. I don't even call it unprofessional, actually. I'm in my damn office. This is my place of employment. You are, yeah, you're right. If I want to be the barefoot lawyer, you know, at the Travis <laughs> County District Court, maybe you got an argument there. But, uh, no, it doesn't affect my job, how I go. And, I would uh, say, yeah. It's well, like there's a lawyer change. that rocks here. And oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> a lawyer that rocks. So, I mean, if you want to walk around barefoot, I'm pretty sure. And according to Fiera, I mean, what, walking barefoot is healthy it's for you anyway. It's super so. healthy for you. So you're probably going <laughs> to do more with your cases barefoot than someone else that has to wear Shoes. tight shoes. Tight shoes, yeah. 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 Probably. While you definitely need a bachelor's degree to know that walking barefoot is healthy for you, yep. it's, I want to throw this uh, statistic out here. So in the Pew uh, survey of 2014, 37% of correspondents said that their bachelor's degree was not relevant to their current job. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. I feel like that should be higher. I was say, <laughs> I'm surprised that's not higher. I'm surprised. I'm surprised that's not higher. Uh-huh. You know, some people are in denial. A sophomore student say, no, no, college is good for me. This debt, it's, it's, it's good debt. Also, I hate the fact they call it good debt. Yeah. Well, there's one thing. There is no such thing as good yeah, debt. Yeah, what are you that's, talking about? That's, that's I love debt. No, yeah. I don't <laughs> love debt. The statistic I feel like we need to pair that with to get a better picture, though, is what, what are most American majors? that people are actually graduating in. Unfortunately, they didn't have that in the survey. Um, but speaking of majors, so in the Gallup, uh, in the Gallup Stride Education Network, they did a study to where 36% uh, of people surveyed said they wish they chose a different major after they completed college. 
Yeah, that doesn't mean anything to me. I'm pretty sure 36 percent of married people wish they chose a different spouse. We have <laughs> true, true. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'll give the divorce that. rate being what it is, I can't argue with that, and I really don't like it. True. Uh, I don't like it either, but I don't know. I guess we're, we're Are you t- yeah. considered family law? There's a lot of money to be made. I mean, there. but there is polygamy now, so you know. Depends what? on what's not legalized. Thank right. God. It doesn't have to be legalized, okay? You you, do, you can't like force no, somebody right. to love I went one to, person. I lived yeah, in Austin. Right. I went to undergrad. I know about polygamy. I I've had people make those offers to me. <laughs> really? Uh, yeah. Well, you also the, don't need to have a degree to know what that is. <laughs> but, you know. The very first proposition I ever got in Austin. Um, of course, no, you can't. It's Austin. <laughs> Austin. <laughs> That's like yeah. saying when I was in Colorado. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, this guy, old, shamelessly too. Oh, that, that's what disgusts me about it. He acted like it was normal. Of he course, he wanted me to <laughs> yeah. put on overalls and let his wife call me Jim and then bang her in front of him while he was tied to a chair. That's and I was just like, oh, what the fuck? Are we, yeah. <laughs> are we getting into this right now? I would rather not. And I was just like, because <laughs> okay, I got stories. <laughs> I was like, what the shit? There's so much going on there. I'm, no. I don't agree with the overalls <laughs> things and stuff like that. So, I mean, if the guy wants to be tied down and like see some stuff happen, you I'm like, oh, okay. That's the only mild part of that equation. So, what uh, I still don't understand is how some people can tie themselves oh, and then you walk weird. in and they're they're just completely they're just already tied. Like, <laughs> was somebody else in here? Nope. Like, how did this happen? <laughs> Y'all just talented. Exactly. You've been doing this for a long time. So. Wow. Uh, well, we've gone to war over women. Uh, if you're turned on enough, you'll tie yourself up. That's, yeah. That's low on the pole. <laughs> wow. He knows women now. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> what was that? He said, wow, he knows women now. Was that sarcastic? I think that's just a random word <laughs> out. I didn't mean, oh, my mic is on. What's next on the, on the agenda? <laughs> <laughs> All right, but the next agenda is our deportation. So we talked okay. about businesses, we talked about governments, we talked about the banks, we talked about um, society, FASFA, and it was really difficult this episode to pinpoint on who exactly to deport. So let's start off our first episode with a mass deportation. You're all out of here. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, <laughs> we're out of here. <laughs> Bye-bye. Yes, because you got, like you mentioned earlier, uh, White Brandon, it is a cultural attitude that has been really been pushing this. And uh, as you, as you, uh, an environmental studies major, is it called a positive feedback cycle or a negative feedback cycle when it continuously builds upon itself? I think it's called a positive feedback loop. But anyway, the point is that... <laughs> yeah, sure, that, let's call that. And the point is, besides my Asianness, so <laughs> I'll go into what uh, Black Brandon said, about it being a rare case to have a post, uh, to a post high school degree. So the more people who said that, oh hey, college will help you get hired, more people go to college. Um, college will help you stand out, more people do college. Mm-hmm. Less people stand out. Oh, you need a master's degree for this to stand out. You need a PhD to read stand this out. Oh, you need, to stand, you need to be a student for half your life in order to stand Seriously, out. Yeah. Like, sometimes it feels years. like, um, when I was in college, sometimes it felt like college is just an extended Childhood, like incentive teenagery. Well, it is for, kind of for us. that way too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, uh, the thing that I wonder, and I don't know how to find the answer to it, uh, like if you're on a campus, you're pretty much incubated from the world around you. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. The yeah. campus can just be your world. If you yeah. are a crazy, uh, or the most leftist. Horrible thing I experienced in law school so far. <laughs> I go to this organization, they're having their meeting. The very first thing is why the 14th Amendment should guarantee universal income. And I'm like, in my head, I'm like, the fuck are you talking about? That was Reconstruction. They just wanted black people to be citizens. But yeah, universal income, sure. But I couldn't pipe up and be like, you're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> like, the organization wasn't structured that way. You and all of freaking undergrad Radical is. Uh, I did that by form in the Federal Society. I do it all the time. Now. <laughs> oh my God, you, you, you should have seen Freedom of speech. Um, you should have seen the way they treated my ass during the Kavanaugh hearings. So. My gosh. Oh. But I mean, I kind of feel like. I had this first 2000s lynching. I'll tell you what. Well, that was cool. Like, As you were saying, RJ. Uh, it's kinda, I kind of see what he means there. Um, if I answer correctly, basically, I mean, even in college, like you guys said, like, but you can disagree with your professor and call him an idiot mm-hmm. if you want to. But man, in college, uh, some people did that, but also, again, it just felt like 
well, let's not pipe up and talk because we still feel like kids. Like we're 21 yeah. year olds. We're, we're legally old enough to drink, but we still feel like kids. We're sheltered. Yeah. Um, yeah. We're like, I can't really speak against an adult. He knows more than me. Yeah. You don't learn that shit until, I, or at least I didn't learn that shit until like after college and I was out in life and be like, Shit, I, you know what? No, if I'm un unhappy with something, I better tell somebody. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why, why yeah. am I Just learning? Just because they're adults doesn't mean they're always right. Yeah. What, why am I learning, or an authority figure, mm -hmm. why they're not always right? Um, which is sad because I feel like that's how a lot of um, college graduates who are like 22 when they leave, they're, they're technically adults. Yeah. They still get, um, they're still very vulnerable to abusive bosses afterwards mm -hmm. because those bosses are like, yep. he's just oh, no, a kid. No, no. He's say, never stood up for sorry, himself. You're, you're good. Go ahead, guys. <laughs> but where I was going yeah. with the first thing is uh, oh, I kind of wonder, basically, are colleges setting themselves up to be this incubated thing where, because mm. for the most part, you don't really challenge kids. Like, yeah. if uh, I were teaching, a, I don't know, like my philosophy class, basically just talked to us about philosophy, but there was really a right way to think. But every belief is capable of being challenged, but that definitely doesn't happen at most universities, mm. especially from the university angle. And that is, I think, one thing people should do, because even if you're dead right, you have to be able to explain why you're dead right. You have to be able to point out argument. You have to be able to point out flaws in people's arguments. And for the most part, what I experienced, you just kind of point out flaws in the arguer when you can't find anything wrong with the argument or don't even want to engage it. But the underlying question is basically, is this the university setting up that environment or are they just appealing to what you know their clients the students want do people not want to be challenged and just want to pay several thousand dollars a year to be agreed with and told they're special and hmm. made to believe that they're turning into these intellectual super warriors that's going to go out there leave the incubator and stand up to the world and lead them to the new renaissance that only they know about <laughs> Some people do, and I'm not trying to bash your degree because that's something that you wanted to do. Yeah, totally. And totally. you're passionate about. Yeah. But there are some people that just go to college and they just get that fine arts degree. Yeah. And arts. they do nothing <laughs> with it. Yeah. You know, so it's like, because it's, I mean, the easiest thing to Te yeah, they're like, technically. Yeah, they're, the attitude is that, hey, yeah. just get your liberal arts degree because liberal arts yeah. is the liberal easiest thing. Yeah, liberal studies is what I meant, <laughs> not fine arts, liberal but arts. But anyways, yeah, I, yeah. arts yeah. degrees, liberally liberal studies. Um, yeah. I agree, uh, only in the fact that like it's there's that stereotype that mm -hmm. your fine arts degree is the easiest one you can go for, you might as well go for that. Yeah. Your English degree is the easiest one to go for, just go for we that. Should, it's been we should definitely... Um, I think that we would have a lot less issues with people just going to school and getting a degree as well. And we briefly touched on it earlier, but FAFSA okay. came out in the school year of 98 to 99, right? So if, I think that if people didn't have access to an unlimited amount of money, or seemingly unlimited, right? We all know that the country is massively in debt, but that doesn't affect our, our loans right now, right? No. So we can go. Right? And most people, when they apply for loans, they get exactly as much as they need to pay for school. And that oh, makes right. it so that the, the universities can continue charging whatever they want and they can raise prices to whatever they want because all their students can continue being funded. And even people who don't care that much about school can go to school and take out these low interest loans and get some degree that they don't care about, mm -hmm. right? They're just doing it to, I guess, fit the mold. Yeah, yep. And, and they have all these tax breaks for college students. I remember yeah. getting back maybe, and that was without working. I. Upwards in the ten thousand yeah. of dollars yeah. just yep, to go girl. to school, <laughs> but but at the same time, sorry, at the same time you're like, um, okay, I'm getting back ten thousand dollars, but I owe yeah like thirty thousand right. dollars. So and, it's and, like, and you think through that whole process though, right? Mm -hmm. Like, there's no way that first of all the, the government can't can sustain something like that, no. and the universities are getting pure <laughs> profit because they they have no reason to ever lower their prices. Oh um, yes. There's a university arms that's going on, if you haven't noticed, to where they say, we need more frills, we need more recreational centers, we need a bigger, yep. better sports teams. Mm -hmm. yeah. All these things that fund into, oh, hey, students, we're going to have another increase in your email. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Both this is student government, but you're not going to get this email anyway because we're going to bury in the mass amount of emails. Yep. Oh, also, when you graduate and we know you haven't, we haven't helped you get a job, we're going to send you those Hey, have you thought about donating to your alumni? Right. Uh, I hate that so much. Are you but kidding no. me? I'm I poor. get it from no. Canada every They're day. They're deported too. They're deported too. All yeah, the people. They, they are deported. <laughs> They're deported. So I, I looked at my bill because I'm paying for school out of pocket right now. So like okay. that's why I'm working full time. So I just pay all my classes out of pocket. Okay, cool. But oh, good. 
I had six hundred dollars in miscellaneous bullshit fees. Yep. What is that? Do you live on campus? No. See, and that's. So I I pay for all my own food, all my own (laughs) everything. That is just I took one class. Uh, So so I looked it down for one class. It was like eight or nine hundred dollars. Maybe yeah, I think about there. Okay. One class was that much. And then you add there was a hundred dollars athletics fee, not a gym fee, <laughs> athletics to pay for the athletics team because they cannot fund themselves because Texas State has a bad sports team. Yeah. And I, think, I, think, I, was, <laughs> I, say, I was gonna say one of the reasons why I went decided to go like specifically to an art school. Like yeah. I know I could have gone to like UT and taken an art program there, but also I was like, um, when when I was in high school, one of the things I I was warned about by like. Um, some adult or whatever was like, yeah, but you also don't want to, what sucks is that like, you don't want to be someone who's charged oh so much for like the athletic stuff to fund their, you know, sports team. Yeah. And, like, what but is it's that? it's critical how, to your how college did, experience. Exactly, I'm like, <laughs> what is, why, why should you support, like, what is the sports team doing for you? So I'm it, like, yeah, nothing. that makes sense. I don't want to pay for it. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm actually going to try to bring it up, like go to the university and figure it out, right? Because I can go to them and say, hey, I'm working full time. What, like, what can I do to mitigate Not these fees? Do that. Right. They're exactly. going to look at your skin and the fact that you're male and say, mm, do you really want to ask this to us? Oh, I mean, you're probably right. You know, I'm not going to get any benefits from that, but I, I can at least. It doesn't ask. hurt to ask. Yeah. Um, I think so. I think the only way you can get those fees waived is after you graduate. You can request all of those back. That's crazy. So they yeah, do have crazy. a way for it okay, to work. But by then, but I'm going to have that good job. I know. <laughs> but they do have a system in place for that. I need the money now. That. I have rent to pay. Well, yeah. whenever you graduate, whenever you get your diploma they're supposed to also put in a little piece of paper saying um, like all the extra stuff that you pay for, for your degree. And then you have degree. like- <laughs> Quote unquote degree. It's not even a real degree. <laughs> and, just, and you have like, I think maybe 10 days to request all of that money Of course, back. you only have 10 days. Yeah, no. And, and let me tell you something. It's I'm a sure, short amount of time. I'm sure they're not going to send out a daily email blast no, reminding no, you. No, like, no, by no. the way, you can re- get the money back. Also, this is after graduation, so guess how many people are in that office. Exactly. <laughs> it's after graduation. But like, that's the thing. It's like, why is it only offered after graduation? Because, when no because, take advantage because they already used the money, so mm-hmm. they probably used the money for what they needed and invested the money. So they already made their money four garbage. times before garbage. we even graduated. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it cooked. definitely yeeted out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Those who need to get out All of right. here. Okay. So, uh, who wants to start off with final thoughts, dropping your social media tags, if you want to drop any? Um, I was also going to just kind of keep in right. uh, I wanted to, um, I guess, sort of remind myself and everybody else, because the thing is, um, you know what sucks is that, like, again, I kind of go back to the whole thing of, like, um, adults in our lives telling us, like, in order to get a good job, you need to go to college, and I was like, why did they think that, or whatever, right? And, and I also worked um, for a staffing firm for a little while after college. Um, and I was doing some research and it was like, I was like, okay, so why are employers like demanding more and more people to have like bachelor's degree for like a customer service job, whatever. When I was working in a staffing firm, like they, we had one client who was like, no, nothing less than a bachelor's degree for this customer service job. Um, and what I learned was, and what I, I, what I learned from my research and what it reminded me of from my working experience in that staffing firm was, Oh yeah, and it is true that like, so basically a lot of hiring managers to cut back on like money for the company, whatever, like money that we spend, the money that the company spends, um, they're like, okay, well, you know what, if I just put in the uh, job notice or whatever, um, minimum bachelor's degree that should, that should cut back on training. And which is funny because like I said, when I graduated and went into work, a lot of the first companies that I worked for, um, they were like, they didn't train new employees. <coughs> They were like, well, she's already got the bachelor's degree, so that should cut back on new training. We don't have to train. They assume, hey, we don't have to train a new employee. If they already have a bachelor's degree, they know what to do. And then, and then of, course, when, of course, when we uh, kind of fail at certain aspects of the job, they're like, well, we didn't really get what we thought we were getting here. And it's like, well, why would you? You should always train a new employee. Yeah. Every company and job is different. Mm-hmm. And then also, uh, added, you know, to add to that, um, of course, um, less and less human eyes are more, more and more companies are using um, you know, automated services yep. to screen candidates, of course. So again, it's a, another way to 
save the company time and money to just be like, okay, I'm going to enter minimum required bachelor's degree so the, so the computer can just screen. If you don't have bachelor's degree on your submitted resume, the computer will just toss it out. Um, it will just reject it automatically. Save this company time and money. Um, we don't have to train these people, and we're only going to get the people who have bachelor's degree on their resume. Um, and of course, I've like um, since left that staffing firm for many reasons. <laughs> one of the reasons <laughs> being like that. Um, one of the reasons being that, though, and I want to look back on it. I'm just like, man. Um, you know, those are. I feel like those are two things that also need to be addressed and resolved um, in regards to why um, the employers themselves are just. I mean, I, I, I if from what I read and from what I've seen firsthand, I'm like. Yeah, it's true. Like the only reasons why they're looking for a bachelor's degree for certain jobs where you're like, why do I need a degree for that? Um, it's mostly because they're like, oh, we're going to cut back on training and we're going to cut back on um, the time that's spent on looking at resumes. Um, so anywho, I'm not saying like every single job out there that says minimum bachelor's degree. I'm not, I know there are certain jobs that do require a degree and certain level of education. That makes sense. Um, I'm just saying, like, wow, no wonder why our parents are so um, worried for us. <laughs> and, and, you know, parents these days are still worried about it because they're like, wow, so many more jobs are requiring a bachelor's degree for, like, a supervisor's job, a production supervisor's job. Um, that wasn't like that 10 years ago. Um, and I'm like, yeah, you know what it is? It's because of this. How do we kind of fix the employer mindset and uh, the company's mindset on basically, what's that I'm looking for? Not, not giving each individual applicant the attention anymore. Um, I mean, we barely about... have students' attention, so why <laughs> <laughs> the applicant's attention? So yeah. anyway, yeah. That, that is something that majorly um, affects um, why there's such a need uh, and such a panic to get that bachelor's degree. Unfortunately, because um, the screening uh, process becomes more automated and more and more companies are more like, OK, let's cut back on, let's cut corners however which way we can. Yeah. <laughs> and cut it's back sad. On spending. Oh, do you have social medias you want to drop? Yeah. Um, you can follow me on Facebook, RJ Castillo. Um, Instagram, RJ underscore in black. Uh, and RJ dash edits.com is my website. All right. You're oh. not going to include your fat life? <laughs> Not my fat life, Why no. Why do you actually. know that? <laughs> you know what? I got. You were putting everything on blast. <laughs> I got it. I got it. Um, taking a deep breath. <laughs> taking a deep breath. So, uh, who is ready with their social media drops and their final thoughts? Uh, um, I guess for for me, I want to just end my angry black woman stance with something positive. Um, I feel like. None of this should sway anybody to not get a higher education. Um, me personally, I'm happy, as yeah. well as I think all of us are pretty content with our education. Bold of you to assume. <laughs> hey, I'm pretty sure by the time you're done, you're going to be happy. You got the business management is really big. Like it's it's going to be great that you know what you're it doing is, and how yeah. to run a business. You're that's a good, you're in a good position, plus you're white. That'll help. Yeah, yes. give me a job. When you <laughs> right? Whenever you open your own whatever, I just need a job. Um, where was I? Oh, <laughs> you were saying that basically you don't want this to sway anybody into like not going for the higher just education. Just wanted to think more about this. Yeah, yeah just, just take into consideration everything before you take yeah. a big leap. Instead of putting your faith into... People that virtually do not care about you, you need to take care of yourself. Mm, mm -hmm. um, so I guess that's the basis yeah. of that. And just do something you love. You know, I love the environment, and I found something that I was able to pursue in college, even though I did have to take a couple of measly math classes. Um, I know how to multiply in my head now, so that's yeah. cool. Um, thank you. I appreciate it. Chris and I already had that as white and Asian, uh, but... Oh, gosh. Well, I am <laughs> black. I'm super black. I'm mixed, but I'm super black. <laughs> so I... I wasn't born with a calculator in my head. <laughs> 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 All right, wait, uh, social media. Uh, social media. So uh, my name is Sierra D. Anderson Rodriguez. 
on Facebook, Sierra Sees Sees on Instagram, exactly how it sounds, wavy. And I also have a LinkedIn, uh, it's just Sierra Dawn Anderson. And uh, that's it, I think. All right. Thank you. Black Brandon. All right, so final thoughts. Uh, as far as where higher education is, like I said in the beginning, as far as the universities themselves, I think they're in a decent place, just curriculum academically speaking. There's so many pickings out there that it's really on you to find what suits you. Um, the only real exception that I'd say, and I know we didn't really heavily get into it, is um, some, a lot of universities are having a shift, just uh, not culturally speaking, but ideologically speaking. Um, there was a lawsuit filed against UT last week for basically doxing conservative students. Um, and nine different organizations came together. And these aren't conservative organizations. These are like just basically legal or educationally focused versions of the ACLU to sue, you know, one of the biggest schools in the country. Yeah. What is the ACLU? American Civil Liberties Union. Oh, that's why I didn't know it. Sorry. It's, uh, <laughs> Sorry. it's liberalism run amok. Okay, but uh, do you have any social media tags that you want to drop? Uh, uh, let's it's see. okay to say no, uh, Mr. Jim. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> A little less social media savvy than, not savvy, friendly than I'm uh, <laughs> um, Let's see, there's my Facebook. Uh, my name's Brandon Mason, M-A-S-I-N naturally, in the French manner. Um, let's see. I suppose people can email me, which is on the Facebook. <laughs> uh, besides that, uh, there's a frightening amount of information about us that's uh, in public databases, so my number's in there somewhere. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> that's right. Equifax saw fit to release a bunch about me, so uh, <laughs> you can find that there, too. <laughs> so does Fat Life. So does Fat Life. <laughs> All right. Why Brandon, our 20 year old? Yes. Uh, who's not going us with a bar afterwards? Regretfully not. Aww, but so uh, I guess for social media wise, I, I primarily use Facebook. I Final guess I've thoughts. got that too. Um, we covered a lot of stuff. I think that the, probably the most important thing for anyone who hasn't gone to college yet, if you end up listening to this, don't underestimate taking a year at a community college mm -hmm. or a gap year, like they mentioned earlier, right? Yeah. Just, and I think that Black Brandon will appreciate this too. Figure out your best option, right? And a lot of times you won't know what your best option is by the end of senior year. So nope. figure out what will be best. And I don't think, I've never heard of someone who started at ACC and did transfer to another school. Um, and there's smart ways to do that, right? Where you, you can still apply as a freshman if you have less than 30 credits, stuff like this. Uh, if you don't go right off to college, you can help yourself a lot <clears> in the long run, unless you're already getting offered a full ride somewhere. In that case, take it. Break the system, do well with your life. That's um, right. <laughs> Heck yeah. But social media wise, um, I guess I'm also on Facebook. It's just Brendan Kinney. I've got other social media, but I don't post there, so don't follow me. Um, <laughs> I also run a, a political club at Texas State. If anyone does happen to go around in the San Marcos area, we do discussions like this every week or so, sometimes every other week, just trying to get people engaged politically. Um, it's called Texas State University of Libertarians. The name doesn't explain what we do, though, and I don't care about your political beliefs. So show up and eat free pizza. I can't eat the pizza. Can you bring me a salad? <laughs> the pizza's free. Can you bring me a salad? I can't mean, eat I, the pizza. Are you going to show <laughs> up? I will show up if you bring me a salad. A pizza salad with, like, pepperonis and salami. A pizza salad. See, I, I was considering that maybe you said at first a piece of salad, and I was like, that's <laughs> way <easier." laughs> I'm not a rabbit. Um, okay. Uh, off the topic of... Pizza, salads, and rabbits. So, <laughs> uh, two, two, minutes all to, two minutes all together. If you have any comments, uh, con comments, maybe concerns, or questions about, uh, about any of our topics that we lightly touched on, we are, I'm actually going to do a solo, a solo follow episode premiere that will show, that will be, uh, I can't talk today. My English is losing. Okay. <laughs> oh, you're better than this. You got this. I, oh my God. I'm, I'm even deported my first episode. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, off from the top. So, after every panel episode, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a solo follow-up episode where I'm going to read all your comments, your, your questions, whether it's on Facebook, YouTube, 
If you're listening in on iTunes, then you can email me at Christopher Ian Solera at theminoritydeport.com. Uh, it's Christopher, it's K R I S T O F F E R I A N C E L E R A. I don't know why I did that sign language for my. That's、uh, super Asian. <laughs> I don't know why, as in my, as in my deaf、name. audience. Yes, there、Your、is no close podcast to... audience. Yes, my deaf podcast audience. I'm sorry. Look, I can't see. I'm Asian. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but、uh, on that note, I hope you have a great week, and thank you kindly for watching. And from us at the Minority Report, support your soul into a better life. Hey, what's up, Brandon?